Hi guys, I'm back with a brand new video. Earlier I had promised um, you guys that I was going to do an in-depth aperture tutorial and my shoot got postponed today because of the rain. So today I decided to make a bunch of video for you guys and make sure you take good notes because it's very imperative um, that you can actually go back and look at what we talked about um, just so it could resonate with you guys. Alright, aperture. What is an aperture? Aperture is basically the opening and closing of your lens. Here's the, the lens is open and here the lens is not closed all, <laughs> all the way but you know it shrinks in size. All right. So you're wondering how does this help you? Very simple. Let's say you are at a museum where there's not a lot of light. You're taking pictures. Turns out your aperture is this big. How much light do you think is coming in? Not much. What's going to happen? Your picture is going to be dark. All right. So what do you want to do? You want to open up your aperture. Now there's more light coming in, so your pictures are not going to be underexposed. Okay? Very simple. Now the question is, how do you control this? Opening and closing. You could do this from your camera. And I'm going to show you exactly where to go to do this. But before that, you have to understand the relationship of f-stop, which is a numeric value. That numeric value basically decides the the size of your aperture, okay? So you have to understand that relationship and it's very important and sometimes it can be confusing for people. So here's the deal. I don't think you can see this diagram so I'm gonna do a close-up later. All right. When you have, when you look in your camera, there's gonna be a number and in front of that number it's gonna say F, okay? It's called F-stop. That F-stop, that F numeric value basically decides the size of your aperture, okay? The smaller the f stop number is, the smaller the, the, the f numeric value is, the bigger, the wider the opening of your lens is going to be. Okay? So if you want more light coming in, you have to make sure that you are choosing a smaller f stop number. Okay? And the bigger the f stop number is, the smaller the opening is going to be. Let's say we take an aperture. Um, f-stop 2, the aperture is going to be big because it's a small numeric value and if you pick an f-stop let's say 22 the aperture is going to shrink. Remember opposite relationship okay f2.8 or f1.8 that's a smaller numeric value so your aperture is going to be big. More lights coming in right? and if you pick a bigger f-stop number, 22, in some cases 32, let's say, it's going to shrink. Now, less light is coming in, all right? Now, let's go over this chart, and I'm going to show you exactly where to go to change this f-stop, and how you create those blurry background you see in portrait pictures. Or if you're capturing landscape, uh, you want to make sure that everything is very sharp. So obviously, you need to know what f-stop you need to choose in order to create those effects or that sharpness. All right, all right, guys. Let's take a look at this chart. In this picture, you could see if you have f2, okay, set as your aperture, your the opening of the lens is all it's wide open right here. Now there are some lens that can go down to 1.8, 1.4, okay. That means that there's even more light coming in. So they're like really good for um, low light situation. And as you can see, as you increase the number, the numeric value here, F 2.8, you can see that it's getting, the opening is getting smaller. You go to F 4, it's even smaller. F 5.6, it's, it's, as the numeric values of the F stop is going up, the size of the opening is getting smaller. Okay? So, opposite relationship. The bigger the number, the smaller the opening. The smaller the number, the bigger the opening. Now, let's see um, where we need to go to change this f-stop number. So we... Alright guys, so here's our camera. 
Right now it's on manual mode. Um, if you have not watched my videos on shutter speed and ISO, I suggest that you change this to A, which is your aperture priority mode. If you are a Canon user, um, it's probably going to be AV. Okay, that's going to put you into aperture priority mode. All right, so in this mode, you can actually change the f-stop number. You can also do it in manual as well, but you need to know how shutter speed works and how ISO works because manual is 100%. Um, you have to set the settings by yourself. The aperture, it's semi-automatic. Um, you set the aperture, basically, the f-stop number, and your camera will pick the ISO and shutter speed for you. All right, so let's put this on aperture for right now. And here, let me turn on my live view. All right, so if you look here, well, this is on my camera. There's this dial right here. I can move this dial and change the f-stop. Okay? So here, I don't know if you could see it clearly, there's an f2.8 says right here. Okay? And that's the f number I was talking about. Um, now, if, you, if your camera does not have a live view, you could see the same information in the viewfinder. Okay? All right. There you go. I'm changing the dial, and it's changing the number. f3.2. Here, let me see if it's better this way. 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.6, 6.3. All right, what's happening is I'm increasing this number, all right? The aperture of the lens is actually shrinking. Remember, opposite relationship. Bigger the number, smaller the opening. All right, so F32 is the maximum my camera can go. All right, and I can go down to 2.8. Now, there are some cameras um, that will go down to 2, F2, F1.8, F1.4, um, mostly prime lenses, highly, highly, highly recommended, especially for um, portrait work. All right, so that's how you change the aperture. Now, let's go take some pictures and see what... Uh, kind of effect you'll get with f2.8 versus if you choose an f um, I don't know f16 something like that all right all right guys let's take a look at this picture um, I used f2.8 and you could see the background is all blurry and you have a clean focus on your subject which is a green bottle in the next picture I use f 4.5 I believe yes 4.5 and it's still the background is still blurry but it's not as blurry as the first picture and in this picture I use f9 now you could see it's the background is getting sharper you can make out what it is um, and it's sort of distracting as well now this picture I use f22 you could clearly make out what's in the background and it's distracting. So keep in mind, when you're doing portrait pictures, you want to choose smaller um, aperture value. For example, um, 2.8, 3.2, um, 3.5, 4.5. It all depends on what you're sh shooting, what the situation is. But if you're doing a landscape or a bigger group of people, you want to choose a bigger f-stop um, number, you know, 12, 18, 8. It all depends on the situation. It's not, a, it's not a recipe that I can give you, and it works every single time. It all depends on the lighting and everything. All right, so let's take a look at this picture. Um, here I put another bottle next to the green bottle, and you could see that that also is in focus. Um, the reason why it's in focus is because it's on the same plane as the green bottle. Same plane as in it's in the same path. Now, had I moved this blue bottle further away, it would have been blurry. All right, so next picture, if you look at it, I put a soda can there and another box there. And as you could see, the further um, the object is moving away from your main subject, it's getting blurrier. I mean, you could still make out it says Pepsi, but it's still blurry because it's not it's not on the same plane as the green bottle. All right. 
Um, same thing with that little box. It's uh, you could hardly read that. It says it says kebab in the end, I think. Um, and if you look at the flowers in the background or the lamp in the, it's it's blurrier. Now, if that was each, let's say 200 feet away from your main subject, it would have been totally blown up, very very blurry. So distance also uh, makes a, a you know a, makes a role in blowing up your your background. Okay. Now let's talk about how to change your um, focusing points. All right, guys. Extremely extremely important thing. You guys have to make sure that your camera is set on autofocus single right here alright it cannot say autofocus auto that is not good so if your camera is set like this autofocus auto that means the camera is going to choose what to focus and that's not good alright so sometimes camera come with default setting like this you have to go in your menu depending on your camera um, my camera allows me to just change it from here um, but you may have to go into menu and change this so make sure that your autofocus is on single because you're focusing on one single subject uh, and change these little dots to single alright now I can move this dot around wherever I want and focus on that particular subject. Um, once you select this, it's very easy. All you do is press this button a little bit, all right? And then here's a dial right here. You press a button and then you move this dial up and down, up and down. And you can take that square focal point and put it on wherever you want. If you're taking pictures of people, um, you gotta focus on the eyes, all right? So make sure you guys do that. It's really important. We're almost done. I want to thank everyone for sticking around. And I do need a couple of favors from you guys. Um, if you feel this video helped you, please rate, comment, and subscribe. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff um, in future. Um, if you feel you learned anything new today, please post this on your Facebook because there are a lot of people who are on Facebook but they're not they're not on YouTube or they don't know what to search so if you think this video helped you post it it could probably help your friends family uh, another thing I've created a Facebook prof um, fan page um, same name as my channel photographers are YouTube and in discussion um, board I'm gonna start a new thread it's gonna call well I'm gonna name it aperture and this is what I want you guys to do go out there and take take pictures alright experiment what you learn and I want to see, I want to see how to blur the background, just like I taught you guys, do it for me. And upload the pictures, Flickr, SmugMug, whatever you want, and, you know, share the link with us, and we'll all just, just learn from each other, basically. And I don't care if you're watching this video two years from now, go out there, take the pictures, and post the link on the Facebook fan page. And until next time, keep clicking.